Hello, my name is Codemaster Jamal and I'm an indie game developer. Welcome to the 10th devlog for my indie game Virtual Monsters. If this is your first time checking in, make sure to leave a like and hit the subscribe button at the end of the video. I realized that after a year of developing my game, I am roughly 15% done with the entire game. I know I have a very long way to go, but fortunately I know that I have most of the programming I need for my game done, which means that soon I can focus on the graphics and the design of my game. I also know that once I finish the graphics for my game, designing my game will be relatively easy when compared to other things I've had to deal with. I started learning about developing games in 3D roughly two years ago. I was what many would consider to be a total noob, so I guess you can say that this project I've been working on is actually a learning experience for me. Everything you see from my game, I had absolutely no idea how to do them until I watched a few tutorials and experimented with the Unity game engine. Overall, I know what direction I want for the game, however, how I will approach completing something isn't decided until after I jump into it. Relatively speaking, I am also at the point where I have watched all the tutorials that I wanted to watch for my game, and I am now at the point where I am coding things from the ground up in Unity. I spent some time this week making particle effects for my game, but due to what a commenter on the last video said, I think all of my devlogs in the future will focus on precisely one thing that I did for that week. Unfortunately, I won't be doing this until the devlog after this one. Anyhow, for this week's devlog, I will be discussing how I created the level system for my game, how I procrastinated completing the questing system for my game, and my plans for the game's server architecture. I'll also be going over a few minor details and systems I implemented for my game. Despite being only 15% of the way, I've actually done quite a bit of coding underneath the hood of the game that I haven't shown to anyone. I think this intro for the video is getting long enough, so without further ado, let's hop right into it. This is the 10th devlog for my open world monster MMORPG, Virtual Monsters. Now I know I said last week that I would be getting into creating the questing system for the game, however, I realized that before I can get into questing, I need to come up with a system for leveling up your character in the game. After all, quests reward things such as experience points and items to the player for completing them. In the world of virtual monsters, instead of the monsters having levels, it's actually the tamers who have levels. The higher the level, the stronger monsters they can tame and the better methods they can unlock for training their monsters. I'm sure we've all seen progression systems in games, so the idea of a leveling system is nothing new, and truth be told, I've known how to create this type of thing since I first got into game development on Beyond. That being said, most of the tutorials I found on YouTube didn't really tell me anything new and didn't offer a solution simple enough to implement into my game. Eventually I came across a channel called Coding with Unity and that's when I began to conceptualize how I would make the level system for my game. You see, in most games like Pokemon, World of Warcraft, and other RPG games, experience is rewarded based around a math problem. This math problem can be simple or overtly complicated. Depending on the game's design, the formula can be either or. The basic concept is that it takes you X amount of EXP to get to one level, and if it takes you that much EXP to get to that level, it should take you twice or even three times as much to get to the next level. This way, the game feels like it gets harder and harder and requires you to put more effort if you want to complete the game. I knew beforehand that I needed three simple functions for my level system. The first function was the ability to add experience to our player. The second function was the ability to check if the amount of experience the player currently has was greater or equal to the amount of experience that the player needed to get to the next level. And the final function was the level up function which grants the player their next level and resets their current experience as well as how much experience the player needs to get to the next level. The starting experience function and the get experience function came about long after I conceptualized these first three functions for the game. I did a live stream where I went in depth about the level system, so I'll leave a link to it at the top of the video. The formula for the amount of experience needed is based off of the original Dungeons and Dragons experience chart. I went with this formula because it was closer to what I had in mind, which was similar to Pokemon Go's level system. The basic idea is that we are multiplying the player's level by the power of 2 and by a base amount of experience which is constantly set at 500. I can always adjust these factors if I want the amount of EXP to be lower or higher just by adjusting the base amount of experience or the exponent that's used in the formula. I'll also leave some useful links to some articles I found that help me craft my leveling system and help me come up with the formula that I use for the amount of experience rewarded. At one point I came across a stack overflow exception that my level system was stuck in a loop where it was calling a single function so many times that it fell outside of the stack. This happened with my experience check function where it causes a loop if the player was awarded enough experience to gain more than one level. However, I didn't have any bounds to escape the loop. After my level system was done, I somehow lost track of what I was doing in the game. 
I simply put, didn't know what I should be focusing on next. I knew I had to work on the questing system, but I was somewhat burned out from completing the leveling system. I forgot I had a Trello board for my game's progression, which I really haven't updated in a while, so I looked at it and noticed that I was getting a lot of things I had planned out done. However, it had been a long time since I actually updated the Trello board, so I updated the Trello board. I saw that the questing system was still on the board, so eventually I got into making quest trails for the game. However, that didn't last long as I had a hard time figuring out how to create a trail of particles from one game object to the next. Eventually I decided to just start using Unity's line renderer, and I put that idea to the side for now. After a while, I started to mess around with the particle systems again, and believe it or not, I got my particles to look somewhat close to what I wanted. For the most part, it's closer to what I want now than when I started out. I think that I got particle systems down for the most part, but we're still a short ways from creating an actual virtual soul. I also got into a currency system as players will have different types of currency in the game. However, this was done the previous week, and I won't talk too much about it for right now. I tweaked my game's personality system for the monster's AI. I won't go into too much detail, but the personality system is actually based off of modern day psychology. Basically, there are 16 personality types which are represented by an enumeration, and 5 personality traits that are represented by numerical values. Even though both theories are completely unrelated to each other, I decided to combine the two and assign numerical values to the 5 traits based on what personality type is assigned. I haven't completely figured out exactly what values each personality trait should have yet, but the general idea is to create an AI that decides for itself how it would move in battle based around its personality. Personality will also affect how easy or difficult it is to train certain traits or stats for your monster. The idea was to make every monster in the game unique in its own, not just in how you customize your monster, but also how it performed in battle. I looked into making a safe system for the game based on JSON objects, however, I realized that while it would be great to get started with this, I figured I would wait until I started testing how my game's server is going to work, as I wanted to pass a player's save data from the server into the player's client, thus keeping cheaters from being able to tweak their client to allow them to load their own save data into the game. As I'm building this game, I'm really thinking about every glitch you can do in the original Pokemon games, so that's actually what I'm trying to avoid when making my own game. Finally, we're going to talk about what I named this video, Server Architecture. These are my future plans on how I want to develop the server for my open world MMORPG. Initially, I started building a console application for my game server using Dark Rift. I was using Dark Rift's plugin features to do a lot of things, however, after a while I realized that a console application just wasn't powerful enough to host my game and give it the assistance that it needed. I had been watching Tom Wyland's tutorials on building a dedicated server for Unity, and I wondered if it were possible to do the same thing with the Dark Rift library. Fortunately there is, as I found a tutorial by Almoron that works pretty well. So for the past week, I've been reading this tutorial and figuring out how to build my very own Unity server with Dark Rift. However, I will admit that I am mainly using Dark Rift to read and write messages from the client to the server and back and forth. I talked with Tom for a while and he always mentioned about how my game needed physics for the players and my game to be able to interact with one another. I found a lot of his tutorials very useful and I will be applying all of his knowledge into my game server. I've learned a great deal about multiplayer games from watching him. It's actually been one year since I started down the path of making my own MMORPG and I learned a great deal since then. So much that I can confidently say that I'll be able to finish my game based on what I know. That's not including what I don't know or what I will come to know eventually. That being said, I finally decided on what kind of server architecture I want for my game. For the most part, I want my server to be a combination of an authoritative server and a room-based server. A room-based server because I need to be able to divide players into different rooms depending on what state their game is in. For example, the game is divided into multiple rooms. There's the real world, which is somewhat like an overworld for the game. Then there would be different rooms for when a player goes into a store or a house or for when the player gets into battle with another tamer or monster. I'm not entirely sure if this will actually work until I test it, but for the most part, I wanted a different room for every scene in the game, but at the same time, I wanted a single server to work as a dedicated authoritative server to keep players from cheating. The basic idea is to have one server that divides the game into multiple rooms and can move the players around into different rooms depending on what scene they currently are in. Now, I know it might not be possible, but to take the game even a step forward, I would like to create a master server where all the players are connected to, and from there, we divide players into different mini servers, and each of these servers consists of their own rooms that players can interact with. 
had an idea like this prior to reading up on this information, which is why I created a drop down menu on my game's login system. The idea was to divide players into these servers that I named after different countries that exist in the real world of the game. Bluetopia, Neotopia, Linkland, Galadoria, Skytopia, Orisha, Oceano, Oxland. Eventually I would like to make maps of all these countries, however, the initial release of the game will only include the Bluetopia part of the real world. I'm not really sure if this will work as of right now. This is completely out of my skill range, however, that is essentially the plan for the game. Well, I guess that's it for now. I'll be ending this devlog right here as I'm sure it's gone on long enough. If you enjoyed watching the video, please feel free to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more Virtual Monsters content. Keep making games. Till next time, this is Codemaster Jamal, and I'm signing out. <laughs> Season 2!